Hey folks, I'm Troy and you're watching Troy Tube. We're going to take a step back today and talk about what might seem like some older topics. We're going to talk about Adhesive Vinyl 101, the basics. Uh, one of the things that I you realize is a lot of people graduate along a kind of a timeline through their crafting and they forget about certain things. They forget about what products can be used for, what the specifications are, and they forget things like how easy it is to buy say something from Dollar Tree, put some adhesive vinyl on it and personalize it and sell it and make money from it. So stay tuned, we're gonna be right back. We'll talk about that here in just a minute. All right, as I mentioned, we're gonna go back to the basics and talk about adhesive vinyl 101. I think a lot of people forget about things like, you know, the intent for certain vinyl adhesive products. Uh, they forget what they can do with it because they graduate and they move on to other things, whether they've gone to sublimation or maybe epoxy tumblers or whatever, and they kind of forget things. And we forget, uh, you know, how easy it is to go to Dollar Tree and buy something or a couple of things for a couple bucks, 250 now, prices have gone up, uh, and then put some vinyl on it personalize it and use it as a gift or, or a uh, maybe something you take on vacation with a group of friends and make them all wine glasses or whatever it is. It's super, super easy and inexpensive to work with and do. So we're going to talk about that and what all you can do with 651 as well as some technical specifics about the films itself that I think a lot of people don't uh, realize that is out there. So Orcal 651 comes in 80 colors. Uh, historically, it came in 60, well, 62 glossy colors plus two black and white was also available in Massey. It's 64 that was available uh, here in the U.S. Recently, Orifal brought in another 18, or excuse me, another 16 matte colors for a total of 18. So uh, you have 62 glossy, 18 matte, total of 80 uh, now for Orifal 651. So one of the big questions out there is always how long does it last outdoors? How long uh, is it permanent? Is it temporary? How do we use it? You know, what, what kind of applications is it good for? So Orcal 651 is uh, an intermediate caliber film. It is uh, a polymeric film. We'll talk more about polymeric and monomeric here in just a minute. Uh, but it's also a calendared film. There's two types of vinyl essentially, calendared and cast. Calendared film is your mostly your everyday vinyl that you're going to use for most things for decals, tumblers, uh, you know, personalization, all that. And then cast films are a little bit more expensive, and it's a difference in how they make the film, the actual PVC film itself. And cast film is good for things like car wraps or uh, contouring over rivets and creases. You can use a heat gun and stretch it and kind of mold it to shapes and it won't shrink back into its original shape. With an intermediate film that's calendared, if I were to use a heat gun and stretch this and mold it over something, uh, it will shrink back into place a little bit over time and it will tend to pull that adhesive away, become more susceptible to shrinking and cracking for things like that. So it's best used on flat surfaces or mild curved surfaces like car windows or uh, wine glasses, things like that, that uh, are not going to be, you know, require that molding and stretching and everything uh, that uh, a cast film would uh, accommodate. So it's rated for six years outdoors for most colors. Uh, metallics like uh, gold and copper and so forth like that one, they're rated for four years outdoors. And then Brilliant Blue is the one color. It is a very bright blue. It's almost fluorescent, so it has a, a different pigment in it, and it's rated for three years outdoors. Now, I've had a lot of people tell me that they've had 651 on uh, car decals for many years, past six years. Um, but uh, I think that's going to depend a lot on what the environment is like. So if you're in a harsh environment, like we're in South Florida or South Texas, or maybe the far north where it's very cold for months at a time, those extremes may shorten the life of it. But uh, you know, if you're in the central U.S. or something where the weather is you know, pretty mild most of the year and you have a little bit of extremes one way or the other, uh, not necessarily for months at a time or not extremes, it's probably going to last more than that six years or four years or three years, whichever one you have. Again, the colors, six years, metallics, four years, brilliant blue, three years outdoors in the elements, but that'll vary depending on the exposure. 
Now going back to that uh, cast versus calendar, we'll also talk about the thickness. So 651 is 2.5 mil thick, two and a half mil. A mil is a thousandth of an inch. So uh, when you call, talk about cast films, most of those are probably two mil, like 751 is a two mil thick. Most other intermediate films that are in this same class are three mil films. Some people actually even think that three mil uh, vinyl is thinner than 651 when they feel it because uh, it's more it's might be a little more pliable 651 has a little bit more rigidity to it it's kind of a special blend of uh, the PVC film that they use but um, even uh, you know two mil uh, thick vinyl feels drastically different if it's cast like 751 because it's more pliable and it's easier to to stretch and things like that so people think it's a lot thinner but it's not really it's only a half mil difference between 651 and 751 and um, you know people I, I'm not sure why that, that's the only thing I can come up with as to why people think it's so much thinner uh, I did the, uh, the research one time and did the calculation on it and everything and a half a mil which is a half of one thousandth of an inch is about 20 percent as the thickness of a human hair as, as I recall so uh, to be able to think that you can fill two films side by side and tell which one's thicker when it's uh, 20 percent of the thickness of a human hair I don't think you can do it but um, so that that's the the thing with the, the thickness there um, the other thing about uh, the adhesive that's on it is it's a solvent-based adhesive. A lot of your films out there use acrylic or water-based adhesives. Uh, the difference I would, you know, the easiest way I can explain that probably is to think of the difference between Tester's model glue and Elmer's glue, water-based versus a solvent-based cement. Uh, the, the adhesive on 651 is a lot more like cement. So if I put a decal on my car window, a year later, I peel it off, scrape it off, and remove it. I'm probably going to have to scrape that adhesive off the glass because it's going to leave behind a, a cemented uh, adhesive, and it's going to be like powder when I scrape it off. Then you can use Goo Gone or Goof Off or something to remove the excess. But they, you know, I, they get the question a lot. I don't want to put removable vinyl in my car window because I want to take it off later. You can take it off just fine. It, it, it comes right off. Permanent means that it's how long it'll last outdoors to the any exposure to the elements. Now I mentioned polymeric films earlier. Polymeric and monomeric films are uh, the two types of film that you typically see that are you know, basically the, the line is drawn between indoor and outdoor films. Uh, polymeric films, it has to do with the, the, the structure of, um, I don't want to say the molecules of the PVC or whatever, I'm not a, a chemist so I don't know how to describe that properly, but it has to do with how it's linked together basically at that level. And uh, polymeric films are um, you, know, you can even though it's not meant to be contoured for 651 you can still take it apart and kind of stretch it a little bit and everything you feel the difference monomeric films are uh, if you try to stretch them they'll kind of tear like paper uh, so a lot of your indoor films your indoor markings say for wall decals or signs things like that a lot of those are monomeric films they're very rigid you, if you if you kind of flip them they'll sound like paper when they're um, off, off of their backing so those are the, the the differences. I know I made a sign one time uh, that had it, it was the, the surface was kind of textured, and I tried to use a monomeric film on it uh, that, for the flat appearance, and um, it, it had that the texture was like wood grain, like only I guess if you, if you have a piece of wood that's weathered and it tends to bring out the wood grain te texture a little bit more, and I, I applied the vinyl to it, and the next morning when I looked at it, the monomeric film because it was rigid and it didn't it wasn't pliable at all, it had just lifted right off of the surface of that, so. Uh, uh, that was a, a disappointment. Um, I personally don't like monomeric films very much at all for those reasons. They're just harder to work with in my opinion. But polymeric films um, is the better grade of film and that's why you generally see outdoor vinyl costs more than indoor marking vinyl because the PVC film is a little bit cheaper for the indoor side. I've got an example of monomeric film here to show you. Uh, I have some vinyl that I've kept for a very long time for a reason. Uh, this particular vinyl, uh, this was some older 
Cricut vinyl, I believe, um, that we bought when we first bought our machine. So this vinyl is about eight years old, believe it or not. It's barely sticking on the release liner. It's, it's, it's like all bubbled up and coming off of it. But I wanted to show you this because I, I like to, to keep these things around. And you can see over time how much it has shrunk. So if you were to have put this on a wall as a wall marking, uh, this decal would have shrunken that much over the same period of time. Um, and, and that's just a, another reason I don't care for the monomeric films. Now we do not sell these currently. Uh, we probably will be adding some metallic films like this eventually. We've got other products we're going to add first, but um, I just wanted to point out some of the different adhesive film types and the things that uh, people don't consider sometimes. So uh, this is uh, like a, a metallic type luster film um, that uh, I think this is like a generic brand. I maybe got it Hobby Lobby or something. It's very similar to some of the Cricut films, but um, you have all these different types of films. This is like a chrome metallic, and then here's some of the, the Cricut glitter adhesive film that has actually has a texture to it. I can feel it a little bit. The same thing with this. Um, these are meant for indoor use. These are not uh, UV rated uh, at all. So if I were to put, use a, these on a decal and put it on the back of my car, especially down here in South Florida, within a week, this would probably be white or silver. It'll, it'll fade that out. But the one thing I wanted to point out is you have all these different types of films, metallics, uh, glitter films, um, a lot of things like Orcal now has 851 that we'll be carrying soon, which is a smooth, glossy, very glittery type uh, metallic film. Uh, they all can require different settings. Uh, a lot of people buy their Cricut machine or any other machine, and they think that because it's a film that has adhesive that's on a backing that it's vinyl they call everything vinyl and they think that they should be able to just put it in the machine and magically magically cut it all again this stuff's measured in thousands of an inch so you really need to know your machine and the materials you're working with and practice and use your uh, settings and document them or memorize them uh, you know and, and learn what you're working with before you venture out into other things I see a lot of people that um, what they do is they buy their machine in retail. They'll go to Michael's or Hobby Lobby or somewhere. They'll buy a Cricut machine or, or another machine and they'll pick up the vinyl beside it that's the same brand um, or some other brand. You know, I know that there's some good quality sound, you know, like Michael's carries Orcal 651, um, but some of these other brands that are out there are just very, very poor quality. And uh, they buy it, they take it home, they put it in their machine, they have a bad experience with it, and uh, they end up, you know, wasting some money and going to Orcal 651 or, or some other brand or whatever that's better than what they've bought in retail. And uh, a lot of that comes down to just practice, knowing your machine, knowing your materials, and getting through and figuring out what works best for you, what, what works best for your machine. Um, cutting some films can vary from one machine to another. Uh, again, the stuff is thousands of an inch difference. So just the tiniest bit of difference in something like the length of a blade or maybe uh, the thickness of a mat or maybe the mat has dirt on it or makes it a little thicker or something like that can mean a lot of difference in how your vinyl cuts. So again, know your products, know your machine, practice, know your software, know your settings. Don't just think it's a magic machine that cuts this stuff for you. It is a tool, just like a circular saw or a jigsaw. Those things will do a lot of stuff, but if you just go willy-nilly cutting stuff, you're not going to have a good experience. Final topic I'll talk about in this video is what people call marine grade vinyl. Uh, there's not really a marine grade vinyl out there. Um, you know, Orifal and some of the other manufacturers list certain products for use for marine graphics. Um, so cast films, uh, 751, 951, and all those, uh, they're listed as marine, uh, gra you know, to, they can be used for marine graphics. So depending on what you're doing with it, um, in most cases, crafters who who buy 751 or another cast film for that purpose, in most cases they're wasting their money because in most cases 651 will work just fine. Give you a good example. If you're making, say, letters to put on the side of a boat for their license, their registration numbers, 651 will generally work great for that. 
uh, 651, 751, 951, they all have the same adhesive. The difference is the film itself. So if you're just cutting something and applying it to a flat surface, most of the time 651 will work fine. You don't need to spend that extra money on 751 or 951. And most people who are doing that are simply wasting money. Um, and uh, you know, there, there's some people have tried to argue with me about certain things that uh, that 751 is so much thinner. I've already talked about that. It's not really, it's only a half of a thousandth of an inch. Uh, they say that it lasts so much longer. Yeah, it's rated for, I think 751 is rated for eight or 10 years or something like that. Um, but, you know, in, in most cases, unless it's a harsh exposure, 651 is probably going to last that long too. So, uh, again, they have the same adhesive. Uh, the same adhesive strength and everything. The actual film is different and it's made for uh, being able to contour over those uh, creases and do wraps and things like that that are required to do car wraps and boats and uh, a lot of those things. But if you're just, again, applying it to a flat or mostly flat surface, 651 will work great. So hopefully this video has been helpful to you. If you have any questions or comments, post them down below. Hey folks, I just wanted to take a minute to thank everyone for the love, kindness, and support that you've provided to Tammy and I over the past several years. It's been almost 10 years, believe it or not, been eight and a half years since we bought our first Cricut. So we're almost a decade into new careers for both of us. So when you buy great products like Orcal 651, Thermoflex, Heat Transfer Vinyl, DPI Sub, Premium Sublimation Ink, Blanks, any of those things that you buy from our site help support us and our employees and our employees' families. Don't forget about our subscription and membership, which gives you uh, access to our e-learning courses and also significant discounts on product purchases as well. So if you like our videos and everything we do, click the subscribe button down below if you haven't already. And when you do, click the bell next to it so that you'll get notified when I publish new videos. And then in the video description, there's also links to all of our Facebook groups, our Facebook pages. So joining those groups, liking our pages, leaving us reviews helps us out immensely. And we thoroughly enjoy every minute of this journey along uh, this path with you to bring uh, love, kindness, and hope to the world using your crafting hobby or small business, whether it's been in person, on the phone, or through social media.